Our God is great. His name is above every single name, above every single sickness, above every single disease, above every single addiction, above all poverty. And that same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. <laughs> Hallelujah. We don't have to live a defeated life. We don't have to be discouraged. We don't have to be depressed. We don't have to worry about anxiety. Because the one who raised Jesus, the power that raised Jesus from the dead, is in me. It's in you. There's no reason that when you walk by a person, your shadow shouldn't heal. Those things were not just for that time. They were for that time, and they're for now. We got 2021 coming up. And I've purposed in my heart, Lord, a year of miracle signs and wonders. A year of fulfillment. A year of answered prayers. A year of prosperity. Begin declaring that. Begin declaring that. Begin believing it. Begin saying it. I'm preparing you. I'm calling you to stand. I'm calling you to stand with my word and with my presence. I'm calling you to stand in a place of freedom and liberty and to let my glory pour forth. Mm. For you see, I am about to move my hand. Mm. I am about to move my hand across this land. And I want you to take a stand and to speak my word and to stand for me and to not bow your knee. Do not bow your knee, for I'm about to move. I am about to move. And that which seems to be on top will soon be upside down. Yeah. And you must stand. You must stand in my freedom, you must stand in my liberty, and you must bring forth my word. For you have the power. You have the power of me. You have the power to bring forth peace. And I'm calling you to bring forth peace. Be my peacemakers. Do not back down. Do not back down down for my will shall be done on this earth and in this nation just as it is in heaven fear not my will be done hallelujah hallelujah yes. hallelujah. Yes. hallelujah lord we submit to your word and we say yes. We say yes, Lord. We say yes. You have spoken, and we say yes. We say yes, Lord. We will be that instrument that you use. We say yes. In whatever way, in whatever form, we say yes. We agree with you, yes. We submit now and say yes. We lay down our will, our will and say yes.
I shared this with the worship team a couple of weeks ago. You get to a place where I was just sitting in the back and I was thinking about all my inadequacies. I was like, Lord, I am so inadequate. I'm, I, I, there are so many more people that can do a better job than me. Why me? There are people who have a stronger call than me. People who have a greater anointing than me. And so I'm, I'm telling God all my, inadequacies, all in my uh, inadequacies. And he spoke to me. Just in my spirit, and he said, son, that's exactly why I can use you. Because you know you're inadequate. The reason I couldn't use the Pharisees is because they didn't feel inadequate. They felt like they knew it all. They felt like they had the power. And that's why when I came, they missed me. Because it is in, when you are weak, then I am strong. So God is not looking for perfect people. He's looking for someone to be submitted. <laughs> someone to be submitted to his power. I think about when God called Moses. Moses began listing all his inadequacies, telling God, you got the wrong guy. God said, who made man's mouth? So how is the creation telling the creator what he can't do. The moment that God told Moses what he wanted him to do, he had the power of God. The moment God said, Moses, I want you to do this, he was equipped with everything he needed. And so now the word of God has came. The word of God has come to us. And so we've been equipped to carry out that word in this time. We've been filled with the spirit and the power of God to carry out his word. You've been filled with the spirit and the power of God to carry out his word. Doesn't matter about how you, how you view yourself or how you see yourself. God knows that. He knows your inadequacies. He made you. He created you. He knows what you struggle with. He knows your weaknesses. So there's no need for you to tell him about them. There's a reason he comes to you. There's a reason he speaks to you. A reason he lays something on your heart when you pray, when you intercede, when you fast. There's a reason that certain things are laid on your heart, on your spirit. It's because God wants to do it through you. The Lord has been teaching me about co-laboring with him. Now we think about co-laboring when we think about winning souls going out on the street. But I want to co-labor with God in every facet. Look, whatever you need a co-laborer for, Jesse Duplan says, I'll be you too. <laughs> I'll be your partner, Father. I'll be your co-laborer. You want to bring financial freedom to a place? I'll be your co-laborer. You want to bring healing to a place? I'll be your co-laborer. You want to bring deliverance to a place? I'll be your co-laborer. You want to break addiction off a place? I'll be your co-laborer. You want to work miracle signs and wonders in a place? I'll be your co-laborer. Father, we say yes. We say yes, Lord. We submit to your will. We submit to your word right now. And we say yes. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. God's moving right now. He's making you what you need to be. Putting in you what you need, taking out what you don't. All the scars, all the wounds, all the depressions, all the things that have happened to you over this last year, God's removing it. He's taking it out. You're being renewed. You're being given a new mind, a new heart. You're being refreshed. You're being refined. And that when you leave this place tonight, you'll be a different person. You'll think different. You'll speak different. You'll act different. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just take a deep breath. Yeah. Hallelujah. Leave the things of 2020 and 2020. Don't bring them into 2021. It's about to be 2021 and some people are still living in 1960. Or that time that they got hurt, they're still living in that spot. Years have passed, but they're stuck. Father, I release my brother. Freedom from the past right now in Jesus' name. Every single chain, every single shackle, every single hindrance, every single obstacle, broken now in Jesus' name. Broken off of them now in Jesus' name. Freedom. Freedom the anointing that destroys every single yoke of bondage. Yep, that's it. That's it. Hallelujah. That's it, you're free. Hallelujah. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it, brother. Freedom. Freedom. Liberty. Restoration. It's a brand new day. Brand new life. Brand new you. <laughs>
God said you got it. God said you got it. So when you walk, when you walk out of here, act like you got it. Love you, man. <laughs> Henry's been coming up here for weeks, months. I thought he needed community service hours. He didn't. He just came to be a blessing to the church. It takes him about two, sometimes three hours to get to the bus from where he lives to here. And he comes just to take out the trash. People live five minutes away, they won't even come to the church and do that. Three hours just to come and take out the trash, to be a servant in any way he can. God's breaking some things. Hallelujah. Freedom is here. It's here right now. Anybody's welcome. Anybody is welcome. Sometimes we wait for a formal call, but that brother said, I ain't waiting. <laughs> when, that, when that water stirred at the pool, if you waited, you missed it. The water is the water's stirring right now. Hallelujah. The liberty and the freedom of God is here. He's working. I think that sister got a drink right there. <laughs> Woo. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The reason, that this is what the Lord just spoke to me. The reason I'm freeing and delivering people, because to accomplish that word, you have to be whole. To accomplish that word, you have to be complete. You can't be thinking about your past failures and your past hurts your past sins you can't be thinking about how inadequate you are you think I know God is good but this this and that that's a double minded person and what does the Bible say unstable and that person will receive nothing from God so God is making people whole so that that word can be accomplished. Because when God does anything in the earth, he does it through his body. He does it through you. He does it through Jarius and Christina and Jonathan and Heather and Paul and Joe. Where his body, his hands, his feet, his voice, his power, his love, his deliverance. Thank you, Father. You see the step that my brother has taken. There's no shame or condemnation. You see him as your son who 
has come enlisting your help and your aid. In Jesus' name, you have accomplished, Lord God. The moment he stood up and made the decision, it was a done deal. a washing of the mind. Things that are pure, lovely, just, honorable, and good report. Feel this mind. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. People are being delivered from their past. No matter how tarnished you think you are, when you put in the fire, <laughs> when you put in the fire, you come out shiny. No matter how used you think you are, when you put in the fire, Hallelujah. God's people have been living below his kingdom standard. And he said, now is the time. Now is the time to step into a place of sonship. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank 
you, Jesus. You know, God's been delivering people for a long time. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> this isn't anything new for him. This isn't anything too hard for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <sighs> you know, I'm just a passenger just like you. <laughs> we just let God do what he wants to do. And don't think that your thing is the one thing that no one else deals with. That's a lie from the devil. Out of seven billion people in the world, I'm the only one that struggles with this. And if I come up, the whole world's gonna know. Lie. When you come up, you'll see other people come up who struggle with the same thing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We say yes. Yes, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. No, all you gotta do is just receive. Just receive. Thank you, Jesus. Sing that with us.
Thank you, Father. You're so good. You're so great. Why don't you just give him a shout of praise? Jesus. There are some of you who've, who've walked around your, your prison, you've walked around your, your, your cell, and you've been around it seven times, but you forget to shout. It's the shout that brought it down. When they shouted, when they shouted, You've been going around the same thing over and over and over and over again, wondering when is it going to come down? You forgetting to shout. That's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why the devil tries to take his shout from you. It's our praise that silences the devil, it throws him into confusion. Wait a minute, I just called them to lose their job, yet they shouting for joy. I just slammed this door in their face, yet they shouting for joy. The demons go back and say, no matter what we do, it just seems to make them happier. No matter how hard we try to depress them, if they get filled with more joy. So the demons have to go back and report failure. Because they couldn't accomplish what the enemy sent them to do to you. You're more than conquerors. That's what the Bible says. You're more than conquerors. You're not just a conqueror. More than. I heard somebody give this illustration one time. You could be seated. <laughs> you don't have to, sister. <laughs> uh, someone gave this illustration one time about uh, Rocky Balboa. And Rocky, he was beat up bad. Like, eyes swollen. I know he couldn't see. That's why he was, Adrian! That's why he couldn't. <laughs> he couldn't see. He couldn't find where she was at. <laughs> Thank you, worship team. Oh, thank you, brother. Yes. <laughs> that was a victory strum. <laughs> so Rocky was beat really bad. You could see it was evident all over his body. He, he, he was beat. He was, he was weak. He was tired. But he overcame his foe. He conquered him. And so they, they gave him that check. And when Adrian came up, all she had to do was to receive the check. Now that's more than a conqueror. Come on. Jesus has already conquered. And all we have to do is receive. He's already been beaten. He's already been bruised. He's already been crucified. And all we have to do is receive. That can be hard to do sometimes. You, you, look, you try to look for a reason to earn or deserve. But there's nothing we can do to earn or deserve what God did. Yeah. He did it because he loves us. We're his children. And he wants to be reconnected with his children. I told her, Lisa and I got blessed. And uh, 
and the mic is agreeing. <laughs> it just went out under the power. So that's what happens when the anointing come in. Even the instruments will cry out. <laughs> um, and so when we get blessed, I'm instantly looking for a reason. Why did I deserve that? What did I do to deserve this? And God said, why does there have to be a reason? Because actually what you deserve was hell. So if I really gave you what you deserve, I wouldn't have fellowship with you. God does what he does for you because he loves you. And with coming into this new, uh, Alicia and I were talking about this, it's easy to get on it because it's coming into the new year. Coming into the new year, you can step into a new level of the presence of God like you never had before. Pastor John did a message one time, how you leave one place is how you enter another place. So if I left this room mad, I'm entering into the next room mad. So people think when I enter into the next room, I'll change my attitude. Well, no, you just took it with you. So everything that's happened in 2020 should stay in 2020. You're coming into a new season. Hallelujah. Twenty twenty one will be a season of reaping for the people who have planted. And not only, I'm not talking about only money. I'm talking about interceding for God's will. Praying for God's will to be done and carried out in your life and, and in our world and in our government. Tonight I want to talk to you about two things. We will not get to the second thing. <laughs> Favor and joy. God's favor and the joy of the Lord is your strength. But before I start, I'll tell you a joke. It made me laugh. It might not make you laugh. <laughs> so you got these two guys. See, when the joke starts like that, you know, like, oh, no. <laughs> so you got these two guys. They're, they're in an insane asylum. And they decide, I don't want to be here anymore. Everybody around me is crazy. You say, and so, uh, so one night, they knock out the guard. They escape. They, get, they climb out of, a, out of a window, and they get onto the rooftops. And so between these two roofs, there's a gap. So one of the insane guys jumped between the gap, and his friend's scared. He's like, oh, man, I'm too scared. So the one guy that made it over, he's like, it's all right. I have a flashlight. He's like, I'll shine my beam over the gap. You can jump on the beam and walk across. <laughs> and so the other guy's like, what do you think, I'm crazy? You'll just turn the light off when I'm halfway across. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, he was, he was crazy. Because the first step, whoop, go. <laughs> So we're going to talk about God's favor. Now, the word favor, I looked it up. It means in support of someone. In the way that helps or benefits you. Another, another definition said, in the state of being liked or approved by somebody. I'm liked and approved by God. God likes me. 
You say, I love somebody, but I don't like them. I love them, but they work on that last nerve. See, there's a difference. So God don't only love me, he likes me. The state of being held in high regard. An act of kindness beyond what is due. God's favor is an act of kindness beyond what is due. And we desire the favor of God to be on our lives, and we desire to walk in the favor of God. But Lisa and I were talking one morning, and she, and she said this. And she said, God's blessing cannot rest on disobedience. God's blessing cannot rest on disobedience. There's certain things that God has told us to do that we haven't done, and we're wondering why we're struggling. God's blessing cannot rest on disobedience. So just find out if, if you say, man, yeah, I think, I think that's me. Just find out where you've missed it, where you've been disobedient, and get obedient. Remove the dis. <laughs> This year, 2020, has been the most prosperous year for Elise and I. We've made more money in 2020 than we have in every other year of our marriage. And this is a time when businesses are shutting down. People are losing their job. But we've made more money in this year than in any other year of our marriage. That's the favor of God. That's God's favor. We were in Dunkin' Donuts. Elise likes coffee. I drink it once a year. No, I drink it a little bit more than that. <laughs> but we were in Dunkin' Donuts, and this happened twice in one week. Someone, the person in front of us paid for our, our stuff. Twice in one week. That's the favor of God. When you increase, when the world seems to be decreasing, that's the favor of God. In Esther chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, and this is in the Amplified, it says, So it came about when the king's command and his decree was proclaimed, and catch this, when many women were gathered together. Many young women were gathered together in the citadel, into the custody of he guy, I think his name was. So there were many young women under, underneath this guy's custody. That Esther was taken to the king's palace and placed in the custody of he guy, who was in charge of all the women. Now Esther pleased him and found favor with him. So he quickly provided her with beauty preparations and her portion of food and gave her seven choice maids from the king's palace. And then he transferred her and her maids to the best place in the palace. That's the favor of God. Now it said many young women were underneath his care. But when he saw Esther, she, she found favor with him, the Bible says. And so he gave her the best lotions, various creams and lotions, <laughs> the best lotions, the nicest jewelry, gave her seven maids to herself, and then gave her um, the nicest place in the palace. That's the favor of God. When you just come into a place brand new, you come in with everybody else, but when they lay eyes on you, you're given the best of everyone. That's the favor of God. That's the favor of God on your life. That's like she, she, she moved into this neighborhood, and she got the top suite. She came in with everyone else. But because she had favor with God, she had favor with man. And out of all the young women, the Bible says, she was given the best. And this is verse 15. Now as for Esther... 
uh, the daughter of Abihail, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his own daughter, when turn came to go to the king, she requested nothing except what he guy, the king, the king's eunuch, has suggested to her. So now he's giving her inside information. Why? Because she has favor. He's telling her stuff that he hadn't told anybody else because of favor. When God's favor is on your life, no matter what realm you go into, business, school, or whatever, that you have people who have business for 10 years, but God will tell you stuff that will make your business rise to the top because of his favor on your life. Stuff that don't nobody else know, but he tells you because that's his favor on you. And you get to a place to where you expect the favor of God. When you're in right standing with him, you expect the favor of God. As a son, I expect the favor. Now, if I was to go somewhere with my mama, I'm expecting she's going to favor me more than a stranger because I'm her son. And my mom always favored me. She'll call me and say, man, mama made you a banana pudding. I said, I'll be right there. <laughs> or I made you some pork chop and rice and corn. I'll be right there. Why? Because I'm in favor with my mom. You are in favor with God. When God sent his son, his favor was on you. When he sent Jesus, God's favor was resting on you. And that hasn't changed. His favor is still on you. Just in a world when all of these things start to happen, it seems like the favor of God has vanished. Or the favor of God is lifted. That's an illusion. So now he's telling her what things to pick that's going to make the king raise his eye. In verse 17 it says, Now the king loved Esther more than all the other women. And she found favor and kindness with him more than all the other virgins. So that he set the royal crown on her head and made her queen in the place of Vashti. So again, there was all these women. All of them was wearing nice perfume, nice, nice clothes, nice jewelry. But when the king saw Esther, because of the favor of God, she stood out to him more than every other woman. That was the favor of God. That favor has not passed away. We can have that favor right here and now. You can have God's favor. You can walk in God's favor right here and right now. In verse 18, it says, the king held a great banquet. Esther's banquet. That's what he called it. Esther's banquet. For all his officials and his servants. And he made a festival for the front provinces and gave gifts in accordance to the resources of the king. Esther was so favored by this king, he threw her a big party. And everyone else received of the king's dineries and things because of the favor on Esther. The favor of God should be so heavy on your life that when people come around you, they get blessed. That when people hang out with you, Good things just happen to him. That's the favor of God. And this is a place where we can dwell, a place where we can live in this favor. This is what it says in Acts chapter 7, verse 9. And this is in the Passion. Isaac then became the father of Jacob, who was the father of our 12 patriarchs. Jacob's son became jealous of their brother, Joseph, and sold him to be a slave in Egypt. But God's favor and blessing rest upon Joseph. And Joseph, the, the name Joseph means God adds or God increases. And in time, God rescued him from all his oppression and granted him extraordinary favor before Pharaoh. 
So because the favor of God was on Joseph, he found favor with Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh appointed him as the overseer of the nation and even of his own palace. Talk about the favor of God. That's like Donald Trump coming to me and saying, I want you to be over the White House, but not only that, I want you to be over my personal house. I want you to oversee the affairs of the White House, and I want you to oversee the affairs of my personal house. That's what happened right here. That's how strong the favor of God was on Joseph's life. So we're going to look a little bit into Joseph's life. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 37. Isn't this good? Genesis chapter 37, verse 4. Or we'll start in verse 3 in the Amplified. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a distinctive long tunic with sleeves. Verse 4. But when his brothers saw that their father loved Joseph more than all of his brothers, they hated him and could not say peace and friendly greeting to him or speak peaceably to him. So his, his father made him a tunic or another, we see a coat of many colors is, is how we, we also know that. So his father's favor was visible. So his father favored him, and he made him something visible that everyone can see. So anytime his brothers saw Joseph, they saw, our father's favor is on Joseph. It made him jealous. You get like that in the world. Well, people see how you're getting favored, and they get jealous. They don't want you to succeed. They don't want you to rise to the top. They want you to stay miserable with them. So God's favor, or his father's favor, was visible. Genesis 37, 21, it says, Now Reuben, the eldest, heard this and rescued him from their hands and said, Let us not take his life. So they had, they had planned to kill him. They had planned to throw him, throw him in a pit and kill him. But his brother Reuben said, No, let's not do that. That's the favor of God. Even, even there, the favor of God was on Joseph's life. When he said, let's not kill our brother, but let's just throw him in a pit. He said, Reuben said in verse 22, don't shed his blood, but instead throw him alive into the pit that, there, that, here, that is here in the wilderness. And do not lay a hand on him to kill him. He said this, he said this so that he could rescue him from them and return him slavery to his father. So he had planned, what he was planning on doing was... They were going to throw him in the pit. When his brothers left, he was going to take him out of the pit and take him to his dad and say, look, they're trying to kill him. Because yeah. uh, Joseph had went and told on his brothers. He said, the Bible said they gave a, he gave a bad report of his brothers. Snitches get stitches. That's what, <laughs> so that's what happened. He, you know, he, was, he was being a tattletale. <laughs> and they didn't like that. And so his brother had planned to just take him out of the pit and take him to his daddy. And so, but while he was away, they sold him. All right. So this is verse 23. Now, when Joseph reached his brothers, they stripped him of his tunic, the distinctive multicolored tunic that he was wearing. So the year 2020, it could feel like you've been stripped of some things. You've been stripped of the call of God. You've been stripped of your healing. You've been stripped of your job. You've been stripped of your finances. It could seem like 2020 has stripped you. And not only that, these people that were doing the stripping were not enemies. They were his own family. The people that were supposed to love him are the ones that hated him, are the ones that stripped him of the favor. And sometimes we as the body of Christ, we do this to each other with, with, the, with the backbiting and with the nitpicking and the petty stuff. With the petty stuff. The enemy gets us so caught in petty stuff 
nonsense. His own brothers, when it, once he got to them, they stripped him. That tunic reminded, of his, reminded his brothers how much his father loved him and how much his father favored him. When the enemy sees you, he's reminded of how good God is. When you wake up every single morning, the devil is reminded of how good God is. When you take your first step out of your house, the devil is reminded of what Jesus Christ did for you. Which is why he tries to strip you of the favor of God. He hates you. That's why he tries to strip the favor of God off your life. Because you remind him of how good God is. Of how great and how majestic that God is. In verse 24 it says, Then they took him and threw him into the pit. Now the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Now this verse kept, it stood out to me. They threw him into the pit. There was no water in it. Water represents life. They threw him in a place where there was no life. So the enemy will strip you, or he will try to strip you of the favor of God and then throw you into a place where there is seemingly no life, where it drains you, it weakens you. And like that place, it begins to harden you. They threw him into a pit where there was no water. There was no life there. Verse 25. Then they sat down to eat their meal. And when they looked up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead, east of the Jordan. When their camels bearing ladium, ladinum, resin, for perfume and balm with myrrh, going on their way to carry the, car the cargo down to Egypt. So they threw their brother in this pit, and then they eat their lunch like... It's no big deal. That shows you the disdain that they had for him. Verse 27, come, let us instead sell him to the Ishmaelites and the Midianites. Now, this might not look like it, but this is the favor of God. They thought they were doing Joseph a disservice, but they were really selling him into the favor of God. When the enemy tries to strip you and throw you into a place where there's no life, he's really setting you up to be favored by God. So they sold him for 20 shekels of silver. And his brothers pulled him out of the pit and sold him for 20 shekels. His, their own brother sold him as a slave. In Genesis chapter 37, verse 31. Then they took Joseph's tunic and slaughtered a male goat and dipped the tunic in the blood. And they brought the multicolored tunic to their father saying, we have found this. Please examine it and decide whether it is your son's tunic or not. He recognized it and said, it is my son's tunic. A wild animal has devoured Joseph. It is without a doubt torn him into pieces. So Jacob tore his clothes in grief, put on sackcloth, and mourned many days for his son. And this is where the enemy gets a lot of people. His son really didn't die, but his brothers made it look like he did. And so now he's mourning for nothing. He's mourning because he's been deceived. He's mourning because he fell for the trick. He's mourning because he fell for the illusion. And so what the enemy will do, he will create an illusion to cause you to mourn for nothing. Joseph wasn't really dead. But yet he fell for his son's trick. And people go through life year after year after year after year after year. Morning and morning and morning and morning because they've been deceived by the devil. Say, that won't be me. Say that again. That won't be me. Verse 36. Meanwhile, in Egypt, the Midianites sold Joseph as a slave to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and the captain of the royal guard. So now Joseph being sold to Potiphar, again, 
being sold into the favor of God. Being sold into the favor of God. Genesis 39, verse 2. The Lord was with Joseph, and even though a slave, became a successful and prosperous man. So Joseph was a slave, but he still became successful and prosperous. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Verse 3, now his master saw that the Lord was with him. Again, the favor on Joseph's life is visible, but now he does not have a tunic. He does not have a tunic. The tunic represented the favor of his father. So it may seem like you've been stripped of your job, your car, your whatever. That's not the favor of God. Those things represent the favor of God. And just because that thing was taken from you doesn't mean the favor of God has been removed off of you. Because right here it says... And now his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused that all he do, did to prosper in his hand. Amen. The favor of God on your life should be visible. People should look at you and see that man or that woman is favored by God. Yes. It's talking about you. Verse 4, so Joseph pleased Potiphar and found favor in his sight. And he served him as his personal servant and made Joseph overseer of his house and put him over all that he owned in Joseph's charge. So now Potiphar has put Joseph in control over the affairs of his entire home. That's God's favor. Over the affairs of his entire house. So when Potiphar saw this favor on this man, he's like, I want to be around that man. So he made him his personal uh, servant. He saw that God was with him, so he's like, man, because God is with him, I'll bring him into my house. And because God is with him, if he's in my house, God will be in my house. People should want to hang around you. It's just like, man, when I just, when I just get around Jerry, it just seems like I just get blessed. People just walk up and give me stuff. When I hang out with Jerry, somebody just bought me a new car. When I hung out with Jerry the other day, somebody just came up and bought me some groceries. Oh, I'll use somebody else. When I hung out with Doug, <laughs> somebody just came up and gave me a jet ski. <laughs> See, that peaks and that turns some heads right there. When people hang out with you, they should leave blessed because of the favor of God. The favor of God should rest on you so strongly that when people come around you, they leave blessed. Amen. This verse is talking about me. The verse is talking about you. Verse 5. It happened that from the time that he made Joseph overseer in his house and put him in charge over all that he owned, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house because of Joseph. It had nothing to do with Potiphar. Potiphar was blessed because of God's favor on Joseph. So the Lord's blessing was on everything that Potiphar owned, in the house and in the field. Why? Because of Joseph. When you go to a job, that job should increase. Sales should go up. More business should come in. because of the favor of God on your life. That business, when you get there, or when you get that job, no matter what job it is, that business should see an increase in revenue because of the favor of God on you. And they'll recognize that, like it says, Potiphar saw that God was with Joseph. And they'll say, man, ever since we hired Elise, it seems that our business is rising to the top. So I'll make her a manager. It seems that when I brought on Jonathan, that sales have increased 100%. So I'll make him a financial director. 
See, when the people of the world see the favor of God on you, they'll want that for their business. And you can come in, and a person could be there for 15 years, and they'll put you in a spot, and you've only been there for six months. That's the favor of God. When, they, when people start saying, oh, we're going to make an exception, the favor of God. It's like you only have been here this long, but that's the favor of God. Well, you don't have the proper qualifications, but that's the favor of God. Well, we normally do this, but that's the favor of God. I'm going to do a message. How big is your butt? I once was sick, but I once was poor, but I once was addicted, but I once was lost, but how big is your butt? <laughs> huh? I'm trying to lose. I'm trying to lose mine. I've been hitting the gym. So. <laughs> So Potiphar left all that he owned in Joseph's care. And with Joseph, there he did not need to pay any attention to anything except the food he ate. So Potiphar let, gave Joseph complete control. And the only thing he made control of himself is the food he ate. Because some people are picky about what they eat. Now Joseph was handsome and attractive in form and in appearance. And then the next verse said, look just like Jerry's Hagen's. <laughs> yeah, that's the J.H. translation, yeah. <laughs> the Jerry's Hagen translation. I like that translation, though. So, in, so Potiphar didn't, he said, it says that Potiphar didn't concern himself with any of other affairs in his house other than the food he ate. That's how heavily the favor of God rested on this man's life. And that favor was not just for them. Because you're Abraham's seed, that favor is in effect right now. And so you get things that are trying to mess up God's favor. So because he was handsome, Potiphar's wife saw him and was like, man, this boy is so handsome. So she begged him. Come, come get in the bed with me. He's like, nope, I can't do it. He said, how can I do this thing? First he said, how can I do this thing against God? Number one, I'm sinning against God. And then against Potiphar, who has given me control over everything, he says in the Bible, except you. He said, he's given me free reign on everything in the house except you. Why would I mess that up for a one-night stand, for a moment of, of pleasure with you? He was basically saying, it's not worth it. You're not worth the favor that I have with, with God and with Potiphar. But so many times, we as the body of Christ, we fall for those things. In the garden, God said, you can eat of every single tree except one. And that's where the devil came to them at. Did God say? And that's it. And so they gave up on all of this for this. Gave up on all the control, all the power, all the dominion that they had for the one thing that God told them they couldn't. And the body of Christ falls for that over and over and over again. That we, are, we, have, we have the unlimited favor of God on our lives. But yet we see this thing and we're like, I have to have that. And so she lied and said, you know Joseph, the one that you love so much? He tried to sleep with me. And said Potiphar was filled with anger and threw him in prison.
This is what it says in Genesis 39, verse 21, and I'm going to close with this. But the Lord was with Joseph and extended loving kindness to him and gave him favor in the sight of the warden. See what I'm saying? No matter where he was at. Verse 22. And the warden of the prison committed to Joseph's care all the prisoners who were in the prison. And whatsoever was done there was left in Joseph's charge. This is in prison. But yet the favor of God is so strong on his life that no matter where he goes, he rises to the top. So the enemy's like, man, he prospered in Potiphar's house. I got to get him out of there. And so he threw him in prison. Boom, went right to the top again. And the warden said, I don't even need to concern myself with anything. I just put it in your charge. Whatever you say goes. That's, what, that, that's what's happening right there. And that devil goes again like, oh. no matter what I do, it is. No matter how low the enemy tries to keep you, you, you should always rise to the top. Because the favor of God rests on you. The favor of God is on you. It's not something that you have to try to get. I know uh, Bishop Clarice Fluid. She was, she was here at one time and she was praying over uh, Elise and I. And she said, this is what the Lord was saying through her. God said, my favor rests on you. God's favor rests on us. And so I was excited about that word. And then I instantly started reading books on how to obtain the favor of God. And right there, I missed it. I'm trying to obtain it when God said I already had it. I'm trying to unlock an open door. <laughs> yeah. I'll figure this out myself. Yeah. God said my favor rests on you, not it's going to. Yeah. He said my favor rests on you, so now I'm like, man, I got to read these books on how to walk in the favor of God and how to obtain the favor of God. I'm excited, and then I'm reading all these books. I'm like, I'm getting so sick and tired of reading these books. Like, and I'm, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to work up something that God said, my favor rests on you. And so I, God reminded me, God, I was just going through my phone one day and I heard that because we recorded it and I heard that. And I asked God for forgiveness. I said, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. And I just started saying, your favor rests on me. And this year. My wife and I have made more, more money than any year of our marriage. In a year when a pandemic hit, we've made more money this year than any other year. Because the favor of God. We didn't lose our jobs. We actually got increases on our jobs. I was working less and making more. I got some confessions for you. Is that all right? Yes. We're just going to confess the word of God over you. So when you say these confessions, say them with power. And this is something, I heard Heather say this one time. I'm not confessing this to make it happen. I'm confessing in agreement to God's word. I'm not going to say, I'm going to say this a hundred times and it's going to happen because it'll never happen. It's God already said it and I'm agreeing with it. He told Abraham, I have made you. And then in Romans chapter four, it talks about he's the God that calls things that be not as though they already were. Another translation says he calls things into existence that never existed. So when we confess these things, I'm not confessing this to make it happen. I'm confessing this in agreement to what God says has already taken place. Amen? Amen? Amen. So why don't you stand with me? Hallelujah. 
Ain't God good? So I'll say it and then you repeat. I will experience supernatural increase and promotion through God's favor. The favor of God will restore to me everything the enemy has stolen. God's favor will bring me honor, even in the midst of my adversaries. The favor of God causes me to increase in assets, especially in the area of land and real estate. I will experience great victories in the face of long odds. I will receive recognition even when I'm the least likely to be selected. Jesus, that's good. I will experience preferential treatment. My petitions will be granted even by ungodly civil authorities. Did you catch that? It don't matter if they're unjust. My petition will be granted. Why? Because of God's favor. Policies, rules and laws will be changed or reversed to my advantage. Jesus. Wow. That's very powerful. So what the government's trying to do to the church, because we have the favor of God on our life, it's going to, some things are about to be reversed. Some things are about to be changed. And the people that are digging the holes and the people that are selling the, setting the gallows will be hung. Just like in Esther. It's going to be exposed. Haman was exposed. It came right down to the wire, and he was exposed. The wicked and evil plan that he had planned, it was exposed. And he hung on the gallows. Now, there's two separate types of gallows. There's one with a rope, but the one that the Bible talks about in the gallows where they stick a wooden pole through you, and they sit you at the entrance of the town so that everyone can see you. He was exposed and put on public display. God is about to expose some things. I won't have to fight battles because God will fight them for me. Hallelujah. You lift your hands. Father, well, you just listen. But I love the enthusiasm. <laughs> you just received. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> Lord, you see the eagerness of your people. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for your favor, that it has not been washed off of us, has not been stripped off of us. But Lord, this, in this coming year, in the year 2021, will be a year of answered prayers, will be a year of extreme victories, will be a year of miracle signs and wonders, will be the year that we, that we learn how to tap into what you've already done and already accomplished for us. We accomplish more in this year than in the past five years. We say yes to your word. We say yes to your will and yes to your way. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We say yes. Hallelujah. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We are blessed, number one, because God loves us. We're his children. 
And then we're blessed to be a blessing. When we give into the kingdom of God, into his people who he shows us, we're not subtracting. That was such a revelation for me, brother. It's not subtracting. We're not losing anything. We're actually gaining more. What do you have? Well, we have five loaves and two fish. Bring me that. Now you might think this, this little boy gave what he had. So now he was left with nothing. Well, actually, there were seven baskets left over. Yeah. Seven <laughs> baskets. Make me a cake first. You think, man, she's making her last meal for this stranger. It's like, hmm. But yet, the meal didn't run out and the oil didn't run out. Sounds like she had more than what she started with to me. What do you have? I have a little bit of oil. I just have a little bit. Find these buckets and start pouring. Sound like she ended up with more than what she started with to me. That doesn't sound like subtraction. It sounds like multiplication. So when I give into the kingdom of God, God is the one that set my expectation that I will multiply. It's not wrong of me to think that way because God is the one that set that expectation, not me. So when you give tonight, Give with the expectation that when I'm giving, I will be multiplied because God said so. When I give, I will receive more than what I gave because God said so. When I give, I'm not going to decrease, but I'm going to increase because God said so. Sometimes the enemy make you feel like, well, it's arrogant to think that way. No, I'm just thinking how the Bible tells me to. So when you give tonight, give with the expectation that I'm giving, knowing that I'm going to multiply. Amen? Amen. You can pass those bags. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anybody that wants prayer for anything? It doesn't matter what it is. My wife and I will pray for you. Come, brother. How can we pray for you? Just stay strong.